I accepted Christ at about eight years old. But by the time I reached my teen years, I was drifting away from the strict religious standards that had been set by my parents. You see, we were a church family. That's what we did. By the time I turned 15, I was in full-blown rebellion. It started with cigarettes, and then at 16, my first beer. In my case, unlike so many of my friends, I really liked my first beer. I left home at 17, and without any accountability in place, alcohol became a big part of my life, and my 40-year journey into alcoholism had begun. I stayed on the fringes of church to keep my wife happy, but my real comfort zone was the camaraderie and social life that came with drinking. Needless to say, my relationship with my family deteriorated due to the emotional abuse that came with my drinking. To my friends, I was a fun-loving drunk. To my wife, I was abusive and threatening. After 15 years of this, she finally filed for divorce. She remarried and moved to Washington State. Any resemblance of stability was gone and I began to unravel. My relationship with my sons was for the most part non-existent and I would be, it would take four, 25 years for that to change. But in the fog of my addiction, I was okay. In 1998, a second marriage, and then eight years later, an alcohol-related divorce. Drinking had become a controlling factor in my life, but in my mind, it wasn't really a problem. It wasn't really hurting anyone. I wasn't an alcoholic, never drank at work. I could quit if I wanted to. I just chose not to. And besides, I really liked the taste of beer. In 1990, a third marriage. We had met during an on-duty bar check, and that night after work, I went back. A year later, we were married. But this relationship began to suffer from the ever-present alcohol in my relationship. I was starting to have feelings of guilt about wreckage I was leaving in my wake and sank into an alcohol-induced depression. The jokes about Ted and his beer were funny at first. The lines like, he'd walk a mile for a Budweiser were probably more fact than fiction, but they weren't funny anymore. In 1997, the depression led to a failed suicide attempt. I had finally hit my bottom. I was kind of like the prodigal son, only my pig pen was a beer bar. In 1998, I retired from the police department. We moved to Lake Havasu. At the prompting of my wife, we started looking for a church to maybe save our marriage. One Sunday morning, November of 1998, we walked into Calvary and my life changed forever. There I found a life-changing relationship with Jesus Christ, not religious rules or microscopic critics. I found acceptance and a pathway to freedom from my addiction. Life change had started. Hi, my name is Ted. I'm the recovery pastor here at Calvary, and today I celebrate 22 years of sobriety. My whole life has changed. My relationship with Jesus Christ is growing daily. My marriage is healthy and Christ-centered. I have a growing relationship with my two sons, my adopted daughter, and a stepdaughter. I have all those things that I had lost. A lot of those things have changed as other things have changed as well. In 2005, I had the privilege of being the startup leader for Celebrate Recovery. It was there in this Christ-centered 12 steps and eight biblical principles of recovery that I found a true place to, path to freedom. The healing really started when I applied step three. We, or in my case, I, made a decision to turn my life and my will over to the care of God. Romans 12, 1, therefore I urge you brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. When I got to step five, I realized that I need to come clean about my past to find true healing. We admitted to God, to ourselves, and someone we trust the exact nature of our wrongs. James 5:16. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. Over these last 17 years, I have witnessed God working miracles in the lives of more people than I can count. As a result of Celebrate Recovery, many of those people have found life change through a relationship with their higher power, Jesus Christ. They have found the freedom that I found. Today, as a follower of Jesus Christ, I live in freedom. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you, not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. In all my rebellion, in all my failures, in all of my misery, God still had a plan for me. Thank you for letting me share.